I should be doing my next Persona 5 video. If you've been following my series, you already know this, but for those who haven't been following, I've been doing a series of Persona 5 videos, each one looking at a particular section of the game, centering on one character, one palace, one theme, and hopefully they all add up to a good deep dive into the game as a whole. But this latest installment has been taking a while, just because I feel like this latest section of the game is important, and I really want to get it right in the video. It's, it's taking longer because I want to get it right. So... I, uh, tried to not let myself get distracted. I did what I usually do if I'm feeling a little out of my depth. I consult a book, and the book I went to was one by Paul Deman, and I was reading an essay entitled The Concept of Irony, which I really think is a work of genius. Anyway, I was reading it because I felt like I was in a kind of ironic position, wanting so badly to finish writing the next video in my Persona 5 series that I found myself unable to do it. I mean, that's as ironic as, for example, having 10,000 spoons when all you need is a knife. Pretty ironic. I wondered if figuring out something about irony would help me figure out what was going on in my writing. So, what does Paul DeMond say about irony? Well, he says... He says... that irony, above all else, could be defined as a constant state of parabasis. And that solved all my problems. So what is parabasis? In short, and as applied to Paul DeMond's rhetorical method, it's a term for what we might call an interruption, specifically an interruption by shifting the rhetorical discourse. Interruption is at the heart of irony. That's why it's funny when Morty mutters or Rick burps. That's why it's funny when the benign will be right back screen appears in the middle of a chaotic segment of the Eric Andre show. Interruption is irony. Also, Paul DeMond goes on to say, <laughs> He goes on to say that irony basically mixes up meaning, turns it into a sort of free-floating currency, susceptible to the inflation and deflation of value, the exchange of value, small things seeming big, big things seeming small. He says irony turns meaning into money, which would certainly make my parents very happy, hey -o. But seriously, seriously. Demand says meaning, like money, is the root of all evil. And I read that, and I was thinking to myself, no way. Then I thought to myself, maybe this guy is being ironic? Then I interrupted myself and my reading and picked up another book. Montaigne didn't really trust people who quoted others. He said that only idiots quote Plato or Aquinas when the next guy walking down the street would probably say the same thing. And, more specifically, he said that people who quote others all the time do so because the wisdom hasn't penetrated their minds, so instead, it remains on the tips of their tongues. I read that, and I thought it sounded cool, so I was convinced by it. But then I remembered, wait a second, Montaigne's quoting people all the time. Was Montaigne being ironic here? The answer is, probably. He was all about interruption. The French critic saint -Beuve compared reading Montaigne to the following experience. Imagine you're walking through a dark wood, so dark you can't see anything at all. But Montaigne is in front of you, holding a lantern, leading the way. You follow him, and each time you think you've arrived at a patch of flat land or a clearing, Montaigne turns around and says, don't trust what you think you feel beneath your feet. Remember, it's dark. Only trust the light of my lantern. So you keep following him until, at a certain point, he blows out his lantern. And now you're alone and lost in the dark. And somewhere in the dark, you hear Montaigne laughing. That's pretty true in my experience. That is what reading him is like. And that's how I know he was being ironic when he said he didn't trust people who quoted people. He quotes people all the time. Then I wondered whether any of the people he quoted ever wrote about irony, so I read some of the work of Plutarch, one of the first biographers. And... <laughs> And 
On the opening page of his essay on Pericles, I read the story of Augustus Caesar walking through Rome and seeing some rich strangers walking around and hugging and kissing a bunch of puppies and monkeys. So Caesar walks up to them and says, Hey, so do you guys not have children with women where you're from? Plutarch here interrupts. Ahem. I said he interrupts. He interrupts. He interrupts to say that and here I'll quote him directly, by that prince-like reprimand, Caesar gravely reflected upon persons who spend and lavish upon brute beasts, that affection and kindness which nature has implanted in us to be bestowed on those of our kind. With like reason, we may blame those who misuse that love of inquiry and observation which nature has implanted in our souls by expending it on objects unworthy of the attention either of their eyes or their ears. In other words, Caesar here made an ironic remark to highlight the irony of these guys loving something he thought didn't merit human love. And in parallel fashion, Plutarch is using the example to call out as similarly ironic all those who give serious thought to frivolous things, unworthy of serious consideration. So I read this and I thought, huh, that's me. By even reviewing games, any games, I'm doing that. It doesn't matter if it's a serious game like Persona 5 or a non-serious game like Either way, I'm just being ironic. I mean, it would have been no less ironic to actually work on the next installment of my Persona 5 series than it was to not work on it. Either way, I'm just that rich stranger in Rome, hugging a dog, earning Caesar's ire. So why not enjoy it? Lean into that state of disproportion, parabasis. So I interrupted myself again to read some John Ashbery. John Ashbery said a lot of great stuff. Like, ask a hog what's happening. Go on, ask him. He also said, does anything matter? Yes, for you must want to see what it is really like, this event rounding the corner, which will be unlike anything else and really cause no surprise. It's too ample. He also said, why be in a hurry to speed away in the opposite direction? toward the other end of infinity, for things can harden meaningfully in the moment of indecision. I cannot decide in which direction to walk, but this doesn't matter to me, and I might as well decide to climb a mountain, it looks almost flat, as decide to go home or to a bar or restaurant or to the house of some friend as charming and ineffectual as I am, because these pauses are supposed to be life. John Ashbury said a lot of great stuff, but the best thing John Ashbury ever said is from the end of his best long poem, in my opinion. Daffy Duck in Hollywood. He says, Not what we see, but how we see it matters. All's alike, the same, and we greet him who announces the change as we would greet the change itself. All life is but a figment. Conversely, the tiny tome that slips from your hand is not perhaps the missing link in this invisible picnic whose leveraged shrouds our sense of it. Therefore, bivouac, we on this great blonde highway, unimpeded by veiled scruples, worn conundrums. Morning, is impermanent. Swing up over the horizon like a boy on a fishing expedition. No one really knows or cares whether this is the whole of which parts were vouchsafed, once, but to be ambling on's the tradition, more than the safekeeping of it. This mulch for play keeps them interested and busy while the big, vaguer stuff can decide what it wants. What maps, what model cities, how much waste space. Life, our life, anyway, is between. John Ashbery understood life is ironic. It can and should be. You should be the greatest living poet in America and write about Daffy Duck. You should wander from interruption to interruption. Just keep ambling on, stay in between everything. Because life is between, it's the... It's the pauses. No matter what you focus or don't focus on, it's ironic in the same way. It's okay. It's like, it's like, um, it's like a no smoking sign on your cigarette break, or a, a traffic jam, and you're already late. It's like reviewing the ironic wonder that is the video game John Ashbury would have played. I mean, it's like reviewing Trombone Champ without ever talking about 